a nice way to kind of think about it is SV cap. That's a nice little mnemonic for you to kind of understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when, let's go into each of these uh, step by step and how the USMLA can actually ask about it. Let's first talk about contractility. Okay. So contractility, we also call it what? We call it? Compliance? Uh, something with an I. <laughs> I have a trophy. Right? I am a trophy. So this is going to be how, how hard the heart is squeezing. Mm hmm and from a cellular physiology perspective, the USMLA can actually ask you that the degree of contractility that you have in your body is actually going to be directly proportional to the amount of intracellular calcium that you have. Yeah. And that's important for you to understand because there's a nice USMLA uh, pharmacology tie-in here in which you have a patient who is on digoxin. Mm -hmm. okay? So what is the mechanism of action of digoxin? It um, inhibits like that Na plus K plus ATPase. Yeah, exactly. So Na out, then... K plus is coming in, right? Mm -hmm. And this is an example of primary active transport, right? Mm -hmm. And if you think about it normally, before we get digoxin into the system, the Na is going to kind of come in here, right? Uh huh. And normally, normally, what is that going to help us do? Pump calcium. <laughs> pump, pump calcium out, exactly. So let, let's just kind of uh, think about this a little bit more to drive home the concept, right? So here you have your heart. Your heart just kind of squeezed, right? Mm -hmm. And when the heart squeezed from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it released a shit ton of calcium. Mm -hmm. So now you have intracellular calcium that's going to be high. Now, there are two mechanisms in which your heart says, clean up, clean up, everybody before the next squeeze, right? <laughs> so yeah. the one way that the heart actually is going to clean up that amount of intracellular calcium is going to be via this whole phospholamban and circa mechanism. Mm -hmm. We'll pause right there. Another way is from this sodium calcium exchanger. Sure. And the sodium calcium exchanger takes the intracellular um, calcium and it extrudes it out following a gradient of sodium. And this actually is what we call an example of secondary active transport. And the USMLA is very keen on that because what it kind of helps us understand is that we're using some gradient to extrude the calcium, and then we are kind of creating another gradient from mm -hmm. primary active transport. And that's why it's called secondary active transport is because mm -hmm. it's indirectly using ATP. Okay. Okay. Now, when we talk about digoxin, now let's put it into the system. So I'll do it in purple because it's nice and uh, pretty. Digoxin actually is going to affect the potassium leaflet, i.e. it's going to inhibit the potassium leaflet of the uh, sodium potassium ATPase. Now, you can throw tomatoes at me and say, Rahul, why are you being so specific? And I'll tell you that the USMLE really wants you to kind of understand that in digoxin overdose, there's some potassium abnormality, so digoxin overdose, and then digoxin toxicity can be predisposed toxicity. Is going to, or you're going to be predisposed to digoxin toxicity with another potassium abnormality. What do you think? Digoxin overdose causes what potassium abnormality? It'll cause hypocalcemia. Mm -hmm. So careful now, right? Because I, I asked you, digoxin overdose causes what kind of potassium abnormality? So don't bring calcium into it, right? Actually, it is going to cause you to have hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia. Oh, okay. okay. Because, because it's all outside the cell and isn't able to get in. Correct. Exactly. Because digoxin is actually going to bind, like I said, the potassium leaflet of the sodium potassium ATPase. Mm -hmm. right? Because the average student is like, yeah, digoxin inhibits the sodium potassium ATPase. But if you stop them and you say it actually inhibits a potassium leaflet of the sodium potassium ATPase, you won't actually, um, uh, you won't uh, uh, forget that thus it causes hyperkalemia along with the altered mental status and the visual disturbances in a patient on your USMLA that has congestive heart failure and needs a little bit of squeeze, i.e. has low ejection fraction. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And so the altered mental status and the visual, that's all related to like the whole Van Gogh, starry sky, night, whatever, uh, kind mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, rhetoric, okay? Okay. What predisposes you to digoxin toxicity is actually the opposite. Hypokalemia. Because if you think about this nice little leaflet, let me just draw a nice little leaf. In order to actually fight for that leaf, if you were hypokalemic and you put digoxin into the system, what would have a higher likelihood of binding more avidly? Digoxin or your low potassium? Digoxin. Digoxin. And that's why hypokalemia predisposes you to digoxin toxicity. Mm. And so that's really important because I know you're thinking that this is a dumb little detail, but it will really, really kind of help you ascertain or understand the whole mechanisms behind the two uh, uh, presentations, i.e. what will predispose somebody for digoxin toxicity, which is one answer question or answer choice, and what will the overdose mm -hmm. in and of itself cause.